Okay, so we've, we've downloaded and installed Unity. <clears throat> now that we've opened it, we'll should be you'll be greeted with a, C, uh, a screen similar to this. Obviously, you'll have a video here. You click getting started. Just a quick welcome video. Watch that. You should have a standard assets example project if you ticked all them boxes and installed everything. Uh, this is the most updated with 5.4 version, which is same, same as this one. We won't open that because it's just going to be too big to open. We're going to click on new and what should we call this? We'll just call this our breakout, breakout clone. So for the project name, we'll just go for breakout clone. And then the location here, uh, you can type it in manually if you want, or I'm just going to click on this dot. Just quickly dash along to where we need it to go. Breakout tutorial Unity. There we go. Organization Harris Studios. It's going to be a 2D project. Enable Unity Analytics. We'll keep this switched on. We don't need to add any asset packages. We'll add these in later on. What you want to do is you click on Create Project, and then it will load up. And whilst it's doing that, uh, it may take a few minutes. So. I'll just talk through again what we're going to do now. So first of all, I'm going to go through what the project looks like, what the layout looks like, uh, how to organize the layout how you want. Go through a few basic setups, uh, some settings. Uh, go to the build settings. I'll talk you through switching around to an Android, to an iOS, and then we'll actually set it up for a web game. Uh, go through a bit of how to organize it so we can set up folders, keeping our scenes, our scripts, what is a scene, that sort of information. Then we'll move on from there. Uh, on the next video, we'll start off with making a menu. For this menu, uh, it will keep it simple, just have a play button and an options button. The options button will then obviously bring up another menu, basically looking exactly the same. Uh, we'll replace all the buttons just for sound on, sound off. Uh, we'll come back to that later on so we can actually configure the sound settings once we put in some audio. And obviously, we'll link it up to actually open between two scenes the menu scene and the game screen. From there, we'll start building the game. And I see that maybe taking up a couple of videos. After that, we'll, uh, we'll look at exporting it. I'm going to set it up for his web game, so I'll go through how to, <clears throat> I mean, how to put it onto a website. So, to start with now, um, we, we, we met with a seat of a screen similar to this, similar layout. Uh, these actual panels may be in a different place depending on what layout you've got. You've got selected. <clears throat> you've got a few options here in the services panel. We're not going to go through these now. We will use some later on. So just right click the service panel, close it. The inspector, I keep it here. Hierarchy, I'll keep it here. The game screen can go up there, but we'll also put the project. To move to move a layout or a tab, just grab it and drag it. And you see what fits in different positions. Put it down to the bottom there. And grab the game screen, put it along here. Pull this down a bit. And also drag this across. So you've got some bars there you can navigate the game screen but since there's nothing on there there's nothing nothing to see to change what it looks like we'll put it back to free aspect just for now as well you click on the game screen right click and click maximize this is now what we're looking at you can actually change the scale um obviously zoom in between one to five times changing the aspect again change it to five to four three to two etc etc Mess around with these to suit it how you want. Also, if you click on here and you click on the plus, you could choose a fixed resolution or aspect ratio. So let's say, I don't know, like I've got here 1920 by 1080. This will be the size of the screen that we're trying to build towards. Just for this, we'll put it to free aspect and also right click and maximize off. Uh, so change the layout a little bit. I'm going to drag it around. I'm happy with this. So what I'll do, click on the layout. A few of them are already built in, and then others will be uh, what I've already saved. So to save this layout how I want it, I'll click on this menu, click on Save Layout. We'll just call this Breakout Layout. I've probably got a few layouts that are exactly the same as I've done this 
set up several times. So we've got to change it now to two by three. I think this will possibly be what you would have been greeted with. And I'll change it to the breakout layout again. Very simple, it just quickly just rearranges things. <coughs> so to get started, uh, over here in the project panel, uh, I'd click on this little burger menu, put it to a two column panel, just for now. Drag it up because I don't need anything else right now. The assets folder, I'll show you this uh, in a second in, in the explorer window. This is by the way using Windows 10, so if you do have a Mac, or Linux, most of the things will work very, very similar, but certain keys will be a little bit different. For example, obviously, to undo something that's Control Z or Command Z, depending on what machine you run. So I'll click on the assets here and I'll right click and do create and then create a folder. And we'll call this one underscore scenes if you can learn to spell. I'm putting an underscore, uh, an underscore here because it'll automatically put them in an order alphabetically. And I want this one to be my first folder wherever I go. So underscore will fix that for me. Right click, we'll go for scripts. Right click again, and then we'll go for sprites. And another one we'll go for sounds. At the end of the video series, I'll make the uh, project files available. I'll put them on Dropbox. I'll probably take them down after a few months. Um, Maybe I won't, we'll see. So we've got a few folders. Uh, obviously start utilizing one of them. You can double click to go into them straight away. And also if you go to right, go to assets and you right click and click on show in Explorer. This will now bring up the directory of where I've saved it. So I've saved it in my YouTube folder. And you automatically get these folders here. We're not gonna mess with any of these. So please don't do what I just did. Go up at your assets folder. Now you'll see the scene, script, sounds and sprites. If you wanted to make another folder, you could do, and then you just minimize, it'll load in down here, and it'll create your folder. So, to start using your folders, I'm going to do Control S. In fact, actually, I'll just go up here. So, Control S to save the scene. So, this scene here um, goes into our scene folders. We'll call this one our main menu. You can call it Start Screen, anything you want. Just for now, I'm going to actually click on New, uh, File, New Scene. And it'll load up another scene, it's untitled, and then I'll do the same thing, go to save the scene in the scenes folder, and we'll just call this game. The reason I'm doing this is because now we're gonna make that uh, we'll make that menu in the next video and we'll go between the main menu to the game screen. So to get back to another one, double click, and now you'll see here we're on the main menu screen instead. So the only thing in here at the moment is the main camera. Don't need to worry too much about what's in here right now. I'm just trying to think of any more settings to go through. Uh, yes. So what you want to do as well, you can go to File, go to Build Settings. Now, an important thing to do here will be to grab your scenes, drag them in. And again, scenes, drag them in. It creates here, this is this is the folder, the underscore scenes and forward slash main menu and forward slash game. What you can do as well, you've got the add open scene, so you click on that, whichever scene you've got now, so this will be the main menu, you'll add it to it. Obviously, I've already got the main menu here, so it won't actually do anything extra. But this is handy, just in case you're, uh, you just create a new scene real quick, you want to click add it in, bosh, done. Then you create another level, you want to add it in, rather than having to keep, you know, grabbing them all, dragging them in. So what I talk about as well, is the iOS, uh, TVOS, Android, Tizen, Windows Store, etc. These are options available on the WebGL HTML. These are options available now with the free license. Just come further down to your Xbox, Xbox One, PS3, PS Vita, PS4. These ones are not available with this license. I'm not sure why the Xbox One says there's no module loaded. Um, because I don't think we can make for Xbox One. If we can, that's really cool, but I really don't think so. A very simple way, if you want to make an Android game, you can go over to Android and you just click on switch platform. Then it'll just automatically change things around so it will suit a, uh, an Android game. And uh, Android layout, or Android settings, sorry. And you'll see the Unity symbol comes over Android. And up here as well, it'll now say Android. 
Whereas going back to PC, Mac and Linux, switch. And then back up here, it's PC, Mac and Linux. So for this, we're actually going to make it a WebGL game. So we'll just click switch platform. That's all we need to do for now. We don't need to build anything or anything like that. We'll handle that in a later video when it comes to actually finishing the project, exporting it, exporting it, and putting it to a website. So for now, you can just close this off. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you click on edit now and you scroll down to your project settings and just go to player, just drag the inspector view out a bit. So over here, we see company name. So best game company ever. Product name. So this is the name of the game. So just call it Breaker Clone. Then you can add in some default icons and default cursors, cursor hotspots, etc. Since we're making it for a WebGL, it's automatically decided to bring up the settings here. And then you change the resolution. So the default screen width, def default screen height. If you set these up here, uh, let's say you decided it was going to be a thousand by six hundred, it would be a good idea to change that over here, set it up. If not one of these, just set it up there so it matches. Just so you'll you'll know you're working to this uh, this uh, these settings that you you set up, and then the the template there you can have it. It's not really that visible, but you can basically have like a little border or a little. Um, it's called an underline section, which says Unity WebGL or minimal, just having nothing. Then you can change the icon, not on this one, uh, that's more for an Android or iOS, something like that. So on the App Store, it'll have an icon, a splash image. You, uh, you can't change it on a personal license. Uh, I think I mentioned that in the last video. You'd, you'd have to upgrade to be able to change this. You can put in your own custom one. Other settings, uh, we don't need to go through any of these. We could keep all these as they are for now. And then publishing settings, then that's the memory size, enable exceptions, the data caching. So we don't need to change anything at this moment. Uh, like I said, when it comes to actually exporting, we will fill out these to the best of our abilities and take it from there. Um, so just another one to touch on. This is called hierarchy. Uh, this is basically every item you have in your game. See here it says main menu. Uh, this is everything within your main menu scene. And then let's see let's put in a couple of cubes. As you can see it's added it to this scene. Um, what you can do as well, you can uh, control and D to duplicate. So now you've got two cubes and over here and also with Q um, W E R and T these five options the uh, five thingy bobs whatever they're called functions things I don't know what they call them sorry uh, the first one is the hand uh, use it to go into your scene view so I'll just close it off real quick not close it off but move it along if you use the hand one, so that shortcut there will be the letter Q. You just use that to grab in your scene to basically have a look around. There's nothing really to look at now. If you click on W or click on up here, you can move your items, objects, items, things, whatever. If you click on E or click on this one, you'll be able to rotate. Uh, you can you can rotate on all three axes, although. We're making a, yeah, a 2D game. As you can see, you can make decent cool effects. If you had a few cubes like that, it could still be a 2D game. Then, if you click R, this is this is for scaling now. Scale it out this way, bit that way, pin it out, maybe make it fatter, whatever you want it to do. As you can see, the difference between these two objects. And then to click T, no, sorry, click back on the scene. Make sure you click on the scene, then click. T, click the object. This is also like scaling. Um, this is more sort of for the what's it called? A transform option as well. It's just another way of, of totally scaling. Rectangular scaling, if I can call it that. Okay. Uh, in the scene, 
uh, if you click on an object and you click on F, it brings it into focus. Um, just like, let's say you've zoomed out here and you've got a massive scene going on, and you've gone through all your hierarchy and you've decided to find the one lamppost in the whole game, and then you click on F and it zooms into where that is. That's just a little shortcut. To navigate this, you can click on your right button on the mouse. It does the same thing as Q, this, the hand tool. So obviously just move this over again. So I right click and you can drag it around. Uh, in, uh, in a 3D view, which is what this button is by the way, bring it into a 3D view. It's actually using the, uh, the cursor wheel. If you click that in, you can drag. Because in the 3D view, if you right click, you can actually rotate and drag and rotate and drag. Flips back to 2D. Zoom in and out, I'm using the cursor wheel and then the left button is used to select. That'll do for now. Uh, in the next video, we'll actually start building our menu and then from there, we will build our game. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you like the video, click on like. Uh, any questions, any feedback, drop it in the comments. Everything is much appreciated. Thank you.